Uh, hi, everyone. We're live. Um, need to get in the camera here. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming for uh, our Claire Wendling artist study. Um, now, I'm just going to point out right from the beginning with Claire Wendling, she does a lot of figure study, and it's incredible. And this is why I wanted to do this. And this is really going to be more of a gestural study. Um, but she also has some nudity in her work. And so that's something to be aware of uh, going in. If that's something you're uncomfortable with, it's, it's tasteful. And it's subtle, but it's there. And I just want to point that out right from the beginning so we're all aware. Um, so we have Eric with us. Hey, Ron. Yep. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, thank you again, everyone. I see Lance Boy is here, Charles Petri, uh, Eduardo Barrios, Brandon Spence says, hey there, David. Hey. Uh, as, as it usually goes with these, unfortunately, it's a little difficult to keep up with the chat and draw at the same time. And I don't have Meredith here to read the chat, so we will miss a lot. But I think we'll also be able to cover a lot of ground. So uh, yeah, with that said, I'm gonna switch my camera here and uh, we're just gonna get started. And so I'm gonna start with a book that Eric doesn't have because that's how I roll. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Eric, but I've got another one that he does, so we'll be good there. Um, and this is, this is a, essentially a sketchbook from Claire Wendling. It's it's a ton of her stuff. And um, I'm a little, you know, you can basically see it here. Uh, it, so this is some of her earlier published comic work, some very early work. Uh, and it, it really shows you a, a range of her her stuff. And it's, it's all really, really incredible work. Uh, she has some of the most gestural figures. And I'm a huge Frank Frazetta fan, and I'm a huge Claire Wendling fan uh, for similar reasons. And I think you can really see why. And so what I wanted to do, and I should have bookmarked this. I was looking at it a second ago. No, no, it's time. So here we go. And I'm going to, for right now, Eric, I'm just going to solo at the camera so I can get my reference in here too. And we yeah, sure. back and, you know, and, you know, just bear in mind, you're, you're still with us the whole time. So, you know, yeah, don't go quiet <laughs> and abandon me out here. All right. I've got so much junk on my desk. I've got, water from painting last week okay. everything set up here okay here we go so what i'm going to do the well first let me switch the camera all right neil durkin is here good to see you um cd says how is meredith meredith is good she's upstairs right now watching tv and enjoying not uh streaming but i think she's she says she's not i know how she is she's looking forward to getting back so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with this figure right here. And I think what I'd like to do, Eric, for this time is draw a, a few figures. And then he's going to be very loose and gestural. Hers are very loose, but they're, I mean, they're so precise in their looseness still. But you doing, you doing the, the female figure? Yeah, this one right here. Okay. So I want to capture as much as I can uh, very quickly. Because what I really love about Claire Wendling's work uh, is her gesture. And that's that's really my main takeaway from it. And so I wanted to kind of bring that to you guys. Um, and after we draw uh, five or six figures, what I'm going to do is put the book away and, and we'll try them on our own. And uh, so we'll see how that goes. Instead of just drawing one figure and then switching and then another figure and then switching, um, I want to see how much I can retain after drawing you know several figures. This is really kind of much more how I do it. Uh, if I'm studying another artist. Tomic Art says gesture is key, and Tomic would certainly know he's done a million gestures over the last year, and you can really see the improvement in his work. Her hips a little bit closer in here. I love how she's got her legs shaped. A little wider here, and the knee, actually, this knee, I'm going to have to erase this down a little bit. Conforms really nicely to the other leg. She's got another knee here. And she's an artist after my own heart. She cut off the feet. Although she really usually doesn't. She's actually incredible at drawing feet. Too. Claire Wendling actually drew a uh, an alternate cover for Wonder Woman when we were doing Wonder Woman. Which was very, very cool. All right. So normally with a gesture, my preference would be to not lighten anything down uh, and do more over it. But I wanted to capture as much as I can. So... I'm going to go ahead and do that. And 
And this is really, as always, this is kind of step one for me in you know getting a feel for an artist's work. First, I just do, and I don't worry about being uh, that precise because it's getting a feel, but uh, I just uh, do a copy first and see what I can get out of it uh, quickly, you know? And then from there, it, it's going back in and trying it myself and seeing how much I've gotten. And, you know, you do a back and forth like that a few times and you really capture quite a bit. And I think, you know, it's more for some people and, and less for others. I know I've seen artists that can just beautifully capture other artists' work uh, with very little effort. And uh, I'm certainly not one of those people. So it's a little more effort, but it's really worth hey, it. Could you move your hand a little bit and uh, bring it up a tad? Oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> You're mentioning. <laughs> I was having to do it by memory right off the bat. Yeah, Tomek says, man, that was fast. Well, Tomek, I, I realize now that I'm competing with the likes of uh, uh, Tyler Kirkham, who is like the fastest artist I've ever seen in my life. So she's got her shoulder kind of in here. It points out, I kind of lost that a little bit. I like how she's, it, her work is, is kind of, it's really anatomical and really not in some ways. Like it, she chooses shapes that are so different uh, and I would never draw an arm that way, but if you look at her version, it is incredible. And so, you know, those are the kind of subtleties that you just can't get by drawing your own figures over and over again. And this is the kind of thing you can get very well from life drawing. Uh, so I, I certainly recommend that too. But So I was watching some videos of her drawing and uh, it didn't look like she was um, using much construction lines. It was, it was crazy. She was just getting after it. Uh, it was very yeah. impressive. Yeah, I'm. I'm not surprised. I almost feel like her just her flowing lines are almost her control. Her construction. Yeah, very gestural and everything she does. Yeah, and she sketches a lot, and that's really that's such a big key. Uh, she's got animal sketches in here too, which I kind of want to try. Actually, I don't know if you. Uh, how do you feel about that, Eric? Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll try it out. We'll give it a shot. Um, and you can really see where she's looking at some life and looking at, and she's clearly influenced by now. Not for me to say who another artist is influenced by. My opinion is she's very influenced by Anders Clay, an artist from, uh, I don't want to say, 100 years ago, a long, long time ago anyway. Um, Atomic Arts is trying to study from Tyler. Tyler's my microphone's way over here. Is that better? Yes. Uh, Tyler's brightest day, and holy crap, his shapes are great. Yeah, they really are. And Elman Lequendo says, use reference poses. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the idea with doing this is that you don't want to be reliant on this when you're actually drawing your own work. Uh, and there's certainly nothing wrong. And I look at, at reference very often when I'm doing my own work, um, but it really can slow you down. You, what you want to do is internalize as much of this as possible. It's not possible to do that in a bubble. You need to take in uh, influence. And so it's, it's always really important to me to uh, find artists that, that I really enjoy. And it's, it's a mixture. There are artists that I really enjoy, but it's not really the kind of work that I'm, I'm trying to do. And so I, I don't really pursue it that way. And then there are artists like, you know, Claire Wendling, where, um, you know, what I wouldn't give to be able to draw like Claire Wendling. So, all right, so that's going to be the first one. <clears throat> and I'm going to move on. You ready? Uh, yeah. Okay. So we can find here next. And here, let me switch over so you can see what I'm looking at here. And amazing, amazing animal sketches. And there's so much character too in her book. And let me see if I can find that right now before we move on. I want to show you, she's got a lot of cartoon design uh, and it's such a different look for, her, but it shows you just how versatile she is in, as an artist. And these animal caricatures are so good because her actual animal studies are this good. So, you know, it really shows you the value of um, of study. And uh, with stuff like this, especially, I really, really see the Andrews Clay in there and Frazetta and, you know, a long yeah. list. <clears throat> Do -do -do. Go through, here we go, okay. Here's some more figures. I really, really like this one. So I'm going to try and do this without blocking my reference here so, so you guys can see it. 
going to be a little bit of a challenge. It's way on the right side, but I'm going to do this figure right here. I've actually um, sketched this figure before. I've gone through a lot of this book and done this. Uh, and I, I found this was a really uh, cool figure to draw. So we're going to do that one next. And so I'm just drawing the chest shape first. My arm's going to come out here. My other arm's here. The head kind of angles just out this way. It's a very long head. Obviously, it's not human, so the proportions aren't human. Just want to capture as much of that shape as I can. I love how this arm is shaped. So you've got the deltoid here, and then the triceps really lengthens out because the arm is bent. And so it, it constricts or shortens the, the bicep, which she doesn't really show much there, but um, all in all, and that hand is really incredible too. So we're gonna try and capture that too. Once we've done a bunch of these and done some of our own versions, just on our own, then we're gonna go through her other work and do some hand studies. Uh, I want to tell you right now, there, there's gotta be 150 pages of that book. I don't know how many pages there are exactly, Eric, but- uh, Yeah, it's a lot. I've drawn every hand in that book. I did it two years ago. Yeah, and again, I, I'm looking at the hands in that book. Again, it looks like majority of what she's doing is so gestural. I, you know, I think it just flows out of her pencil. It's incredible. Yeah, oh, yeah, it, it really is, yeah. And, you know, she's a, an artist that, to me, and I don't know, truthfully, I don't know anything about her. Uh, I really should know more. I'm I'm such an enormous fan of her work. It's I should know more, but uh, I... I gather that she really comes up from a bit of an animation background too, because just the way that she studies is so much like the Disney artists. Uh, and the reason why they get so incredibly good is they uh, pointedly dedicate portions of their week to this sort of study. I think it, you know, out of a five day week, it'll be a day. It's a great structure for that foot. It's got a bit of a, this kind of a shape. And it's important to me, I'd see the toes there, but right now I just want to capture that shape. The heel. And I find when I do these, my proportions can kind of come off because I'm, I'm actually looking at the shape so much when I draw, but really I'm not too worried about that. It's more just capturing these shapes as clearly as I can. And I love those feet, really nicely done. This hand, just the whole gesture for it is really great. So... The wrist is going to be about here. I might have a little long. doesn't matter. And she's such a, a, an expert at capturing um, complex forms in a, a really believable way with minimal amounts of lines. And this is where I personally think that, yes, you can just look at life. You, you know, that's certainly a choice. But you're never going to get... Um, the kinds of things you're going to get out of an artist like this, uh, an absolute expert at cartooning that uh, can simplify things down, give you the detail that you're looking for, but keep it simple enough that it's something that you can really utilize in your own work in a simple way. All right. So I've got them sketched in. After the, we do this one, we'll, we'll check and see how it's coming for you, Eric. Am I working too fast? I know I am. Tell me. Um, yeah, it's all right. I'll, I'll make it work. <laughs> all right. Okay, so here we go. Here's the head. I'm not going to worry about the detail on that head. It's it's very alien, and it's very cool, but it's it's not really um, what I'm looking for for study for this one. I'll just need to when when your hand's gone. I'll just need a oh minutes. right yeah. That's okay. You can, uh, carry on. I'm, and then I'm covering uh, it a lot, aren't I? Yeah, that's right. Um, I just need to get the basic idea of his clothes down, and then okay. I'm good. I'm personally, I'm just going to ignore the clothes. Oh, okay. But I'm, really, there's nothing wrong with drawing them if you want to draw them. I'm going to try and angle my hand as much as I can to not cover it. And thanks for yeah keeping me aware of that, too. It's all good. I love it. So she's got just the shape here. She's got this uh, forearm bone comes out. And then the whole arm, actually, for her kind of comes down straight. Uh, and then uh, this muscle here just defined really nicely. And I think it's it's totally okay to uh, add your own, um, 
your own flair to it. You know, the, the point of this isn't to be drawing uh, Claire Wenling's work. The point is to be capturing as much as you can from it. And if there are things like if you, for me, I, I'm seeing a bit of an odd shape here and I think it's a bit of clothing. And so I'm just, um, I know that I want that kind of a shape there. So I'm just putting it in. I'm going to cover my reference really quickly. Sorry. All right. Uh, Daniel Allen has a super chat. These are my favorite videos of yours, Dave. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much, Dallin. Uh, Daniel. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the super chat. Yeah, I love doing these. Of all the videos that I ever do, like of all the, the content with you guys that I ever do, these are the most relaxing. This is, I do this um, really to relax. Like I got so much out of this. The last time I was really looking at Claire Wendling a couple years ago, I was really kind of going intensive with it. Uh, I get a lot out of it, but I also just really enjoy it. It's very therapeutic. And uh, I really lost that hand. I'm going to try and fix it. And this is where, especially with hands, she is truly incredible. So I wasn't looking at my reference. I was kind of drawing my own hand. And you can see, I mean, this is where I, I, I'm sorry, Eric. I need it covered a little bit. All right. I'm sorry, you're good. But it came up here just a little bit more. And then... I got that. And then the shape hooks in here. And I'm just going to simplify the fingers this time. Because really, it's it's about that wrist connection. She's incredibly good with that. And you can see that mine, uh, unfortunately, pales in comparison. I'm hoping that I can capture that better in the next, um, once I uh, do my own version. Because I feel like I, I can see what I did wrong, and I'm kind of just moving on. We'll see. And if you want to draw the clothes, if you're if you're following along, and I hope that you are, uh, certainly feel free. I mean, there's lots to be gotten from that too. Come into her ankle, and this figure that she's drawn here. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't know this because I wasn't there when she drew it, but I guarantee she drew this without reference. And this is just, you know, a result of her figure knowledge, which is um, really superior. I like how she defines her knee. It's everything is so simple and I tend to go much more detailed and, um, uh, heavy with my my dark shapes and and so it's it's actually very liberating for me to just kind of relax with that a little bit and draw something more like this just you know really nice flowing outline shapes and even her toe comes up like this and then you've got the, the actual toe shape here with the nail on it. And I'm going to tell you right now, too, I'm feeling this. I always feel this when I draw from artists that are really great like this. Uh, I'm going to lose things. It's not going to look as good. I'm going to struggle compared to, and I can see the lack of struggle, you know, in, in her artwork. Uh, and I, I just allow that to be what it is. You know, uh, I'm not Claire Wendling and, uh, I'm trying to get as much from it as I can. So it's, you kind of have to be okay with it when it, it doesn't work out um, as well as like this shape here on her elbow that she did here. Let's see if I can capture that a little bit better. So it's, she's almost, I can almost imagine that bone coming through like a, a shape like this and then the soft portion attaching to it like that. And, it, and then a bit of a bump out here. I really like that. So I want to not lose that. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Tom McCart says, I'm actually going to do some Claire, uh, Claire studies. Yeah, I really recommend it. And Pizza Monster Art says, does anyone know the name of the book? Let me take a look really quickly. It is Wenling. It's just called, Wen oh, it's Wenling's Drawers 2.0. Uh, and it's published by, uh, what well, says, Le Cyclist and Legends. Um yeah, I will say it's really difficult to get hold of her books. If you it can, is. they're normally pretty expensive. They, um, yeah. 
They are. I got this one at a convention. This is one I love conventions for that. Just going to booksellers and finding these kinds of books. Um, the Lights of the Emily one, uh, which we'll reference for hands, that one is probably one of the most readily available, I think. Mm -hmm. um, it's we'll in, be, it's we'll normally French, but you can get it in English too. Yeah, we'll be we'll be looking at that one quite a bit. All right. So before we move on, let's see how Eric has come along here. Drawing a bit small. Let me zoom in. No, it's all right. And actually, I can see it. I think they show up really well. They look great. <clears throat> well, thanks. <clears throat> yeah, those legs, I think the shape really, you captured it really nicely. <clears throat> yeah, awesome. And the feet look great. Yeah. Page One Comics, Jimmy, hey, Jimmy, says, where'd you get the book from? I got it from a convention. So unfortunately, not from, a, uh, not from online, but I have actually gotten a... It's. I got some of her books online. I I bought a bunch. I actually bought the uh, the, the one that you have, Eric. I bought a, a few versions of it. I bought another one that I love, and I uh, gave it to my niece. I need to replace it. She's drawing. Um, I gave it to her a couple years ago. So uh, I don't have it anymore. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next one. I can find my mouse. There's got to be a better way to do this. All right, here we go. <laughs> Next drawing. I think... Um, okay, here we go. Oh, no. <laughs> I think my, internet, my internet's failing. I, uh, oh, is it? Oh, no. Well, if we lose, you just come right back in. No, I'm, j I'm, j I'm joking. It's a horse. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do this figure here. I think it's such a great looking figure. So uh, that's the Minotaur. Um, sure. Is it a Minotaur? I, oh, I wonder if I can find this. Let me see if I can find the image. It's a bit hard to see. Let me see. Okay. I need excuses here. Let's yep. <laughs> and bear in mind, Eric, we're doing sketches. You don't need the detail. The whole point yeah. is to get, like, I think you even, I'm looking at it on my screen. That's really all you need. Yep. I, I mean, I say that, and I've got the, the actual drawing in front of me. <laughs> I know. But still, like, really, what I get from this stuff is, uh, and it depends on the artist. Like, with Kevin Nolan, it's a little more detailed, what I get. With Claire Wendling, it really is the gesture and the just the broad, simple shapes. Um, that's that's really what I, I love about her work. So I'm drawing my chest shape in here. I've got my arm kind of sketched in. I really like how that hand connects. So I'm seeing it here. And then the knuckles come up here, just about like that. Thumbs about here. And that's going to do it for now. And then the back is coming in this way. We're going to do the horse. This should be interesting. I've been working on uh, animals for a little bit. Uh, and I'm, I'm finding it so difficult to do. Yeah, because I've never, drawn, never drawn one. You've never drawn a horse? Well, nope. here you go. Okay, so for my horse, I'm drawing a large kind of a um, egg shape for the, I don't know, horse parts, the, the chest. <laughs> and then for the, the back, I'm going to draw a bit of a flattened shape like this. Now, uh, look, <laughs> this is just how I'm mentally breaking it down for myself. I, I don't, I don't want to suggest somehow that this is like a, a great academic method of way of doing it, you know, but I, I think it's, it's really good when you're drawing, uh, complex things like this to be able to just go ahead and just find shapes for yourself. And you'll find that the shapes that your simplifications will actually become a foundation of your artwork. So you want to find the ones that you're comfortable with. And and then there's a bit more here. And then you got the hoof. And I can actually see that looks like the elbow here. So you're seeing a bit of the back of that uh, leg. So that would be kind of the triceps in here. And so the arm anatomy comes in here. And she's got the hoof covered. So I'm just going to fake it. And we can't see the other hoof. I've actually, I've kind of come off. You can see that she's really created a great line all the way through here. And I've lost that. Unfortunately, I'm not going to fix that now, but I, that's the kind of thing I really want to bear in mind. It's part of her power, and you can really see, she's accentuated it with 
she's got like a, a string that she's pulling up uh, and it's part of what makes that figure so good and so losing that is a shame but uh, that's what it is sketching a lot of times and you know um, this kind of sketching is what really makes me aware of those sorts of lines especially when I miss them and I think I'm gonna do the head too, the headdress just because it, it looks great it's just got some great shapes to it so overall a shape like this Another super chat from uh, Tagamo Modelworks. Just wanted to say hi. Thanks for all you do. Thank you so much, Tagamo. As always, it's great to see you here. Hopefully, you're drawing. Bit of a strap over here. I really, my skulls that I ever draw in comics are all kind of from Mike Mignola, from. Um, um, uh, Adam Kubert, uh, all from comic artists. And so I've got my skull and I use it sometimes, but really for the most part, yeah, I, it's much more taken from, from artists, like everything else that I do. So for the back, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this one up and see if I can get a little bit more of this kind of the shape detail. Tagamo says he's watching the, Olympic, the Olympics on and off. And Tom McCart says, Dave, are you going to New York Comic Con this year? I'm going to see if I can go. First time going to a convention. I am scheduled to go, and I'm hopeful to go. And I, I'll be there if I can. My only concern is just the border. That's one thing I don't have control over. So we'll see. But I, I should be there. I, I can't imagine they're going to extend lockouts past uh, past what they, you know, past August. But things change, so I just don't know. All right, I really want to kind of capture it. So I can see the clavicle line just up here. And then there's a shoulder here. And in your arm, you've got your bicep just like this. And then you've got a little, here's your, your uh, uh, deltoid. And then you've got your tricep here and there's a bit of a connection muscle underneath and the way that she's drawn this she's drawn that connection muscle and then the line up to the bicep so if you don't know your anatomy and then she's actually come all the way down uh here and so she's connect she's drawing different muscles in there and just kind of hitting on each one and so if you don't know your anatomy it can make it really difficult to be able to kind of get a sense of of what she's doing there And I have to admit, there are places, especially when it comes to animals, where um, I just don't know well enough. Like in the rump area, I know where the muscles go. I've looked at a lot of actual like life reference for horses too, and and trying to um, reconcile anatomy books and actual pictures of horses is really difficult to really nail it down. Uh, I've been struggling with it, and I mean, she does it beautifully. I don't really have that level of understanding. Got a bit of I, know, I know there's some animal uh, reference books that you had mentioned before, Dave. Yeah, I, I have got them. Yeah, we, you know, we really should cover that at some point. I think it'd be a lot of fun. But for now, uh, just doing this, I'm, uh, yeah, I enjoy this so much every single time. It never gets Can't old for me. Make out what that headdress is, so I'm just going to fudge it. Okay, it's a skull. Okay. Can you make your window bigger? I know you wouldn't be able to see chat if you do that, but. Uh, yeah, one And then there's kind of hair back here. I'm not going to worry about that, but I do want to worry about that hand. That's going to give me everything I kind of want from it. 
and then going into the horse. And I really like, so there's a bit of a curve here. Then this is a muscle just up here, connects to the bone right there. And I find, I have to admit, because I've drawn a decent amount of animals, um, I don't need to know exactly where everything goes and it, quite as much as I do with a human figure. Uh, it's amazing how just shapes, and especially because they're covered in fur, there's a lot that you really can't detail like on a person you're not going to see a horse walking around with a, a superhero suit on so uh, a lot of it is just dealing with broader shapes so it looks like the horse's front leg i guess is almost like a deltoid on it uh yeah that would be here and yeah. there is a deltoid. It's much, it's very differently shaped and smaller. And then your um, clavicle, it's not your clavicle, your shoulder blade kind of comes up like this. So on a horse, uh, on a human, here's your back. You've got your arm coming off here. And then you have your shoulder blade here along the back. And on an animal from the side, you've got your, um, here's your, your chest your shoulder blade sits here and then your arm connects down like that. So it's, it's a, it's the same operation. It just rides along the side as opposed to along the back and the proportions are different, but the, the general musculature is the same. Kind of wasn't really liking some of my proportion there. I'm just kind of going in and fudging it a bit. And really, the point for me always is just to capture shapes as much as I can and get as much from it as I can. So I, I try not to sweat it too much. If that sounds like it's an excuse, it's because it's an excuse. Uh, there. Oh, and there's the other arm here. So that's basically going to do it. And you can see she's got some detail here for her. Uh, this ridge here on your back would be this broad muscle that you have down the center of your back right here. And then this here is her line for her shoulder blade on the horse. So just knowing that really can make things quite a bit easier. Supersonico says, look awesome. It looks awesome, Dave. Thank you so much, Supersonico. And Genovese is here. He says, I see houses wearing superhero. <laughs> I see houses wearing superhero suits all the time. <laughs> yeah. Is that what I said? Probably. All right. So I'm going to move on from that one. And we're going to do, what do we got? We got three. Let's do two more, Eric. How's that sound? Okay. And I see the next one that I want to do right here. It's going to be this one here. And I know, it, again, it's it's small, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to try and zoom in a little bit to see if that'll help. Are you drawing the animal, too? Uh, oh, you're just, you just drawing her, right? Yeah, you know, for this one, we're just drawing her. Where's my... Okay. Yeah, change my monitor angle here. There we go. See how much I can come in and still be in the screen here. And it's, it's light. Yeah, you're good. Okay. All right. I'm bouncing everything. Every time I bounce, my because my camera's just mounted on my desk, the whole thing bounces. All right. So, yeah, we're going to draw this figure. And uh, so I'm going to start with the chest again. The chest is actually pointed really kind of at us. And then the legs are, are pointed. So she's coming this way. And then the legs are slightly uh, turned this way. I just want to get her general chest shape there. And then her pelvis shape. She's got a very long pelvis. Um, and you can see the cut kind of here. I'm drawing over my book. I'm going to have to erase that when we're done. And then she's got this leg coming out here. 
that into about here. And we're making good time, Eric. It's only uh, eight thirty-five, so okay, we're doing all right. And then for this shape here, I really like uh, to draw a bit of a sphere there. And so, and another thing that I like, she's got this ankle here. I really like to draw that as this kind of a shape. So I've got my my foot, and then my ankle sits over it like this. And so that would be my my bone. And it, for whatever reason, for me, that just helps me. And this is where I'm saying, like, none of this is right or wrong or, or anything. And I'm not saying, oh, you should do that. What I am saying is that's a shape that's kind of helped me make that work. So I'm going to draw a ball here. Come in off of that at the bottom. Her knee definition really helps drawing the leg muscles too. Uh, I don't know what that... Satoris? I don't know what that muscle is that wraps around the knee that goes all the way to the hip. Yeah, this one here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it really good. defines that very nicely. It really helps. Yeah, that's a really good defining point. So her head kind of tilted just about like this. I'm probably not even going to draw the face, to be honest. So this one. Um, her hand is really very cool, but it's so small. I'm going to draw it. Unfortunately, I wish my picture was a little bigger. I, I, it's hard for me to see looking at it. And I'm looking right at the actual book. It's not on a screen. But she's got fingers kind of coming down like this. And then she's pointing with this one. And then she's got that coming out here. So that's basically it. Really great shape language. I love the way that she's got this arm drawn here. The connection to the hand there is really great. She's got the bone of the wrist there. And this is a hand uh, I've drawn, and I'm not going to say I've drawn it as well as Claire Wendling for a second, but I will say that I've drawn this right here from memory several times after working on this stuff. I, I it, Working with her work, I got a lot out of it. I especially got hands out of it, and it made a big difference for me. Like I, I found it's so easy when you're drawing to end up with, you know, you have four or five hands that you do all the time. Um, and so looking at something like this uh, and, uh, and learning from it, yeah, it just gives you a lot more to draw from. Tom Morris has a super chat for five dollars. I don't see a chat. Thank you very much, Tom. If you do have a chat, uh, be sure to to put it in there so we can we can see it. And Nembete Zito says her postures have a lot of personality. They really, really do. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to draw the line for her chin. I normally, when I tighten up, I end up starting with the eyes, but I'm I'm just drawing a shape for her head. Yeah, because that hand that she has going there. It's a, what's that? The hand that she's got going there is, uh, yeah. Her right hand. Yeah. Will be a bit of a challenge. Let's see. Yeah, and you know what? They're, they're so easy to draw when you really know how to do it. And I'm not saying that I know how to do it as well as she does, but I'm telling you right now that, like, I did this for, uh, you know, before working for a, a good week. And I went from struggling and just really having trouble with the shapes like it just was not working to being able to just throw them out of the pencil and uh, it, it you know i mean you know how that goes so yeah that hand just feels comfortable for me and i've done it a few times now like this is certainly not my first time drawing that sort of hand so uh and yeah that's that's how you do it Her clavicle is just about here. She's got a bit of a, she's got a shirt on. You get this arm in here.
So the hand is actually at a different position that I was thinking since I couldn't make out some of the lines there. Oh. Uh, yeah, I see it now. And so she's got a, a real indent here. So here's her hip, and then the leg kind of comes out, and it has a, a shape here, and then it comes into the leg. And I like that line a lot. Trying to be a little quick with this one, Eric, because I realize it's a little small and difficult to see. Yeah, it's all good. And the way she does her toes, we're going to cover this more as soon as we do some more sketches of these figures, just on our own. Uh, I feel like it got a little wide in there. Um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more once we get into the hands, because the technique is basically the same. So that's going to be it for that one. <clears throat> Kind of zipping through here to find the next one. Do one more. Oh, I see what I want to do. Hopefully, this will work a little bit better on the camera, too. I'm going to flip my page over. Yeah, I apologize if I'm missing any of the chat. I, uh, I just have to zoom in here. Yeah. I have to full screen the video. I have to... Yeah. And uh, Sir Lester Griffin says it's called Drawers 2.0 Claire Wendling. That's right. And thank you. That's the one that's on the cover, isn't it? Uh, this one. You know, yeah. let me check. Uh, uh, almost. No, no, but it's actually very similar, and I'm zoomed in, so you can't really see the whole thing. But I would be um, so much of it so similar that I, I really think that these kinds of studies, you can see how it really informs her, her um, final art. I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. Know real estate here. Oh, Michael Johnson Curry is here. He has a super chat for $5. Thank you very much, Michael. And he says, I lost it. Hold on, Michael. Coming. Mouse. He says, uh, does doing studies like this help you learn faster or would inking over the work help? I'm making Joe mad uh, stuff. Wondering if this way would be better. My opinion, I think that you get more out of this but I think you get an incredible amount out of inking over somebody too. So I, I think both really work. My preference is to do this um, because I'm having to really recreate those shapes on my own. And this is only one part of it. Uh, as soon as we're finished with this figure, we're going to try and draw these on our own. I'm going to take another, another look at them. What I'll do is I'll look at the figure really quickly, to my own version of it really quickly, and then try and draw it again and see how much we've retained. And, uh, should be fun. Are you ready, Eric? Uh, I've started. Oh, oh. <laughs> you beat me to it. Okay, I'm going. Here we go. So I got my chest here. The pelvis really sits. And I wouldn't draw like this just on my own. I know I wouldn't. I've never drawn this figure actually before. So I'll probably I think I'll get a lot out of this one. So it comes to a peak here, They're just trying to capture kind of the, the broad um, placements. And I love that it, because she's got her arms kind of tucked up and in, the, the whole shoulder is lifted from the chest and kind of takes up its own line here. Again, something I know I would not do. And it just, it looks so real.
And it, it is a question I, I get a lot, which is, um, you know, how do you uh, make your art, make your anatomy more convincing? Um, and this is really, this is entirely how you do it. These kinds of studies, you're only ever going to get so much from an, an anatomy book. You have to, I feel like I took a bit of a risk. I didn't draw her head first. I drew her hands. And so now I have the hope that I got Yeah, her. I'm wondering the same thing. The neck mm -hmm. is extended. Looks yeah, the better like way to punch, so. I think I'm going to work. I think that's all right. But yeah, the better way to do it would have been to draw the head and then put the hands under it. So I feel like I got lucky there. How'd yours turn out? I don't know yet. Okay, we're going to find out. <laughs> Let's see how you're coming along. I just got that structure down. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's looking good. And yeah, you you didn't draw your head either yet, but no. <laughs> I, 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 this was the major flow of the gesture. So I made yep. sure to get that first just by drawing a line and then filling in the shapes. So I just got the back and then yep. everything on the color. Yeah. Yeah, it's looking great. And the last figure looked really good too, especially for not oh, really you. being able to see what you were looking at. I think it, it came out really well. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I'm gonna. I think I'll just draw her sword here, so I, I know where it's going. And her leg is shorter than that sword, and I feel like my leg would be so short if I do that. But so even though she's using really soft lines, she does have a lot of sharp cha angle changes too, which I'm noticing yeah. on the back. Yeah, yeah, she does, and that's something um, I love about her work is is. It is very curvy and soft, but it's really not it, it because it's just so deliberate. Like that elbow really comes out in such a deliberate, strong way. And the line of the shoulder and she's got these, uh, the wrist so nicely defined. Yeah. Those kinds of things are um, really great. And these feet, if there's anybody that does feet better than that, I don't know. And this is already, I can feel like I'm telling you right now, Eric, this is feeling like a bit more of a struggle for me. It's such an unusual kind of a figure drawing. So different than anything I've done. Yeah, definitely for me too. And I will say there are other figures, a couple that I just drew felt pretty comfortable for me. And I've drawn them before and had them be very uncomfortable. So, you know, it, and I, I haven't drawn anything from her work and it's been quite a while. So, you know, you really, you retain more than you think. All right, here comes the head. Good luck. Sheldon Martin says, you did good on that girl standing pose, Eric. Yeah, he really did. Tombo's drawing board says, I think that if you uh, went after the gesture first, Dave, then the, the contour would help you with the form. Yeah, you know, uh, you're probably right. Yeah, absolutely. I, and I, I'm going to say, when I'm looking at somebody else's art, I, yeah, I tend to be following kind of the lines that are there, and it's probably actually not really the best way to go. Uh, it's always worked for me, you know, but um, uh, certainly not to say something else wouldn't work a lot better. And when I draw my own figures, I draw the gesture. And so, uh, you know, I'm going to try and emphasize that when I do these again uh, myself and you know, hopefully, hopefully that'll come through. We're going quiet. Do it. I said we're going quiet. This always happens. Yeah. <laughs> when it gets hard, everybody goes yeah. quiet. 
It happens when we, when, we, when we paint too. There's like long periods of absolute silence. Yep. Yeah, painting especially. Uh, get her knee here. It's just incredible shape language. And especially this angle is so it got a bit of a broad shape here. And then it comes up, it does this kind of a shape. And the way that she's got her the knuckles defined for her feet, she's got a bit of a line here. Really so nice. And this one, I, I don't know that my proportions are off as much as I thought they might be. I find the more I'm, I'm really having to uh, think about the shapes that I'm drawing, the more my, my overall proportions start to really suffer. And I, I have to agree, that is where uh, doing a, a full gesture drawing and then trying to capture the the actual shapes would probably be effective. I had to give her a bit of a turtleneck to reach her uh, to reach her hand. I still didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why I I knew this is so not the way to do it. The way that we did that, and you know, I would never do it except that I'm sitting here copying a picture, so you know, it ends up happening. I just I love the and these are just simple sketch shapes. Some artists just have such a beautiful line that just comes directly from their mind. And the eye is drawn all as kind of one she's got. I'm not going to be able to draw it all as one line the way that she did, but it looks like just a single kind of sketch line that she did that with. I'm not worried about the sword, really. Horns, like the the details, really not the point. Kind of throw it in because it's there. But so that's basically going to be it for me for this one. Somebody says, what is a mind line? I don't know. That might be just me not articulating myself well enough. All right. So I'm going to close the book. And we're going to go into our first uh, session of trying to draw some of these figures just from memory and see what we get. <clears throat> so Tom Morris says we've missed a few super chats. We'll, we'll, we'll have to come back and uh, hopefully catch them. Yeah. Um, well, and you know what, here, let me just scroll up quickly and Oh, we missed Danielle, Danielle Allen with $2. Thank you very much. Daniel. He says, these are my favorite videos of yours, Dave. Thank you. I think we read that one. Yeah, I'll go with that one. Well, thank you again, Daniel. Uh, you know, yeah. we got them all. There's Tom Morris, apparently. Yeah, no, I, I just scrolled back. We got them all. All right. Okay. So I'm going to jump on over here. And uh, I'm going to start with the first figure that I did, this one right here. And so that by, just, Is that by memory? Yep. And so I'm going to flip it over, just, you know, get a, a sense of it here. And uh, let's see what we can get. And here I am doing a bit more of a gestural drawing because I'm creating it myself. So it's, it just, 
Um, it's more of a constructed drawing process, I guess. So I remember that I had this kind of a shape for the knee here. And then the, the other leg really wrapped into that shape nicely. And I don't know, hopefully I can capture that well. Yeah, what I do recommend for folks is uh, David's got a good video on um, on gesture drawing, where he breaks down the mannequin on how to uh, <clears throat> how to create it and simplify the <clears throat> the human figure. If you can do that, you can you know you can um, look at other artists' work and break it down a, a whole lot easier once you have the mannequin figured out. And I really recommend that video. Well, thank you, Eric. Yeah, it helped me a ton. So this is my basic rough in. Um, Neil Durkin says, thanks for giving me a breather to grab another beer for this drink and draw. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. I'm going to go ahead and start tightening it. I can already feel like I've lost some things. And, you know, while I will lose things, uh, it's just another good opportunity to get a sense of what you what you lost. So I will say this is a whole lot more difficult because normally when we uh, draw from memory, we go straight from what we've drawn right into from memory or we've yeah. drawn around three or four other figures. So... A little bit challenging. This is, to be honest, though, this is more how I do it. So I kind of wanted to approach it this way. And this is where you'll really find your own um, artistic tendencies uh, really poke through. And it ends up being a bit of a, a combination of, of your natural way of drawing and what you picked up, which I think is a good thing, you know. And these always go much faster for me too, because I, I'm not having to, I draw very slowly if I'm having to look at something. If I'm just drawing it myself, it's much, much quicker. But, you know, obviously there are things that get lost. And so there's my attempt without looking at anything. Man, you did that fast. Well, I'm not having to, you know, copy somebody else's lines. All right, I'm going to see how it looked in the original and see kind of what happened here. So there's the original. And you can see how that knee really nicely connects into that knee. It has a beautiful flow to it all the way through. I lost that. Uh, I lost the nice shape of that chest. And also just the, the line of the body. And just the arm. There's a lot of subtlety that, that really didn't come through in mine. And so I'm just gonna kind of go ahead and see if I can pick up a little bit more. So I wanna capture that line. Just a little bit better. <clears throat> I think that's a little better. And it's still, to me, I'm looking at this, it looks more like a figure that I would draw than a Claire Wendling figure. But this is inevitable. When you're doing these kinds of studies, you're, you're doing it to improve your own artwork. So, you know, having it, you know, also look like your work, it's not such a bad thing. I think it's probably because you've consumed a lot of it already. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think so. All right, so I'm going to move on to the next one here. 
And for the next one, I think we did this one. So uh, got this shoulder raised, this arms up. All right, let's see what we can get. Kyle Parsons says, David Finch, do you do more studies now or did you do more studies when you were still coming up in the industry? Uh, how has what you study over changed over time? I studied this way uh, all the time. I guess I might as well turn this over. Uh, before I broke in. And then when I broke in, it was really, uh, I didn't do it at all. I was just chasing work. Um, the first time I really did it, I started looking at some Simon Bisley stuff and it really helped me grow. And so I learned my lesson. I went from Simon Bisley and then to Travis Trest and to a bunch of different artists. Uh, I tend to gravitate toward more gestural artists than I once did. But uh, yeah, the, the the general effect is the same. I do it more now than I did then. Uh, and a lot of that is it's my deathly fear that as I get older, I'll just kind of forget. And some artists do. You can see, you know, the work kind of decline over the years. And I think you, it's a muscle you have to keep working. And it's you can't just uh, do professional work. And I've forgotten the figure that. I, OK, here we go. Um, and expect uh, to retain everything. I, I think you you start to lose things over time. It's like handwriting. I know I've said this before, but uh, if you write your name a whole bunch of times, eventually it's just illegible. And that's, you know, something I really want to avoid with my artwork because I, I, I want to keep it sharp. And so it's important to me to, to keep bringing in influences. So I had this hand here. arm here and really pronounced knees And I remember the foot having, it came out this way and there was a defined shape difference between the back and the front of the foot. Let's see a little bit of that one, the ankle. There's a bit of a paper in the hand there. Big, long, weird head. That was basically it. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up. Vincent Yusan says, uh, David Finch, do you need an art mentor? Um, it, it can help, but no, I really don't think so. This is, all you, this is stuff you can really learn on your own. And the only thing an art mentor, in my opinion, is going to tell you is you need to do this uh, and thousands of these, and that's how you get better. You need to uh, really learn the anatomy in a figure and understand where everything goes, and then from there you need to do studies and you need you know um, you need to learn storytelling. Now I, I think a mentor can certainly help with things like storytelling uh, and some of the finer points of of actually working um, and and putting to, together pages because there's there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of skills that go into that can be, that can be difficult to learn from, from uh, just yourself. And from my part, uh, I learn myself, but then I work for Top Cow uh, for Mark Silvestri. I learned so much on the job there. So for me to say, oh, no, an art mentor, you don't need it, uh, doesn't seem fair. So I certainly had that in a lot of ways. I will say, though, that at Top Cow, uh, some people made it and some people didn't. And... Um, there wasn't a whole lot of patience for people that weren't gonna gonna make it. I mean, some people, and really the big difference between the people that made it and the people, the only difference, I'll tell you right now, the difference is some people put the work in and some people didn't. And uh, they really focus their efforts on the people that, that did. Kenny Wang is here, good to see you, Kenny. And he says, 
Uh, well, an art mentor is just incentive, and that's literally the most important thing. Yeah, for sure. You know, I, and I love drawing. There are times I haven't been as motivated to draw as I could be. I like that hand actually a lot more than what I did the first time. I feel like in screwing it up, I kind of learned some things about it. So. And I love this stage of it because I can just go ahead and now all these these kind of sketchy just thrown lines are my own and um, I can just kind of own them rather than trying to trying to copy somebody else's sketchy lines and like somebody's flow is difficult. Let me get his arm in here. And that hand, <clears throat> I didn't actually draw very well. Let me fix that. I drew his his thumb a little strangely. I can definitely see where you <clears throat> where you say you've um, you know studied her hands a lot because I you know you can see I it see right. That hand. Yeah, I see that hand a bunch in your work. Yeah. Yep. And you know, uh, varying degrees of success, I guess. But uh, yeah, that's certainly where I've gotten it. And he had shoes on. Just draw his shoes on. There we go. I think they kind of went like this. So that's going to do it for me for that one. <clears throat> Sorry, but Osmosis has a $10 super chat. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. And he says, hey, Dave, I've been drawing a stick figure as a skeleton for my gesture poses uh, at first, but I see you go straight to a volumetric figure. Do you recommend skipping the skeleton for volumetric gestures? Um, I do. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, I, I, I'm reluctant to say, oh, you know what? Uh, one method is, is better than another and, and to make those kinds of recommendations. But I do personally feel more comfortable drawing volumetric figures. And I think I get a lot more out of it. Um, so, yes, I, I do. Yeah, maybe if uh, Russ can find that video. <clears throat> it was just a gesture drawing tips that Dave put out. It was quite a yeah. while ago. Um, yeah, it's over a year ago now. It's an older one. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I've got uh, how to draw action scenes coming right up. It's edited uh, by Yuri. I, I just need to get it up. So it should be up really in a couple of days. So I'm, I'm pumped. It it's is, been too long it since I've had a tutorial. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, thank you, Eric. Yeah, I can't wait for people to see it. <clears throat> um, okay, so that's that one. I, this is the original here. Uh, I really like this line here and around the knee and this bump out here, both things that I'm pretty sure I didn't really capture as well. So I'm gonna, I had that, but you see, I actually had that shape that I had here over here. I kind of translated it wrong. So let me get that shape back in there. All right. So I'm gonna move on to another piece of paper here and we're gonna do, this is where things are gonna get crazy, Eric. Uh, I'm gonna try and draw the horse. Game Ready over, man. <laughs> oh, that's going to be rough. Okay, here we go. I turned it over, by the way. I'm not cheating. <laughs> I'm not looking. All right. I think I'm going to pull out crayons for this one. <laughs> uh, Russ Hicks has a, a, a um, link up for the gesture drawing. Thank you very much, Russ. And by the way, thank you, Russ, for, for everything lately. Very much appreciated. So, okay, I, I've got my... My chest shape here, I'm going to lose a lot more with this. I'm so much less comfortable drawing uh, horses or animals that I think my arm was here. And I remember there was some interesting kind of arm construction, some in that anatomical construction in there. So I can't remember the exact pose. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to go super gestural with this. Um, and came out this way. That's all right. You know what? 
you'll get all if this turns out to be a fail and um, believe me i've i've done enough um i'm gonna ignore that head for this one i'm not gonna worry about it but uh you still get so much out of it it's still totally worth doing and then i had a barrel shape or my, I think his other arm was kind of out like this, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, barrel shape. Here, I had, and this is where I love these kinds of shapes. Now that I kind of establish them, whether they're anatomical or right or not, it doesn't really matter. Point is that it gives me something to go off of. So my back leg came out like this. Like this. I'm just going to throw it in there really quickly right now. And then you got your, here he had the center muscle of the back here, the uh, shoulder blade here, and then you can see a bit of a deltoid here. The arm was turned out kind of frontward. So here's my triceps, my arm. I think I'm kind of coming off of here a bit. It's all right. I'm do my best with it. And it was something basically like this. There was a tail. <clears throat> Don McCart says, how am I still doing my warm up? It's all right. You know what? You really have to take the time that it takes. And uh, Incognito98 says, uh, <laughs> says I'm late. Um, Hey, he says, you guys are, Tomek says, you're, uh, you guys are really fast. Yeah, you know what? I've been doing this for a long time, and you definitely get quicker. Um, let's go give Eric a hard time right now and see how he's doing. See how fast Eric is going with this. This is wow. really, uh, Way to go. Pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, the wheels are going to come off here very quickly. I'm going to, yeah, I'll draw his face. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. easy, right? <laughs> That's the rest of the rest of the figure from here on down. Yeah. But it really shows you like that. I can see some places in that horse where you're kind of losing some things. But the thing is, you've never done it. And this is, you know, I'm telling you, do 10 of these. You'll be able to draw horses. Yeah, All for right. sure. Yeah, it's coming along. So when was the most recent? I think maybe was it like a I think you posted on Instagram. Was it a walk, Walking Dead cover? Was that the most recent horse you've done? Um. Yeah, actually, it is. Yeah, that was the. It's so rare I ever get to do a horse in a comic. It's only been a couple of times. I was a little long with his hand there, so I'm just kind of adjusting that. And so there was a bit of a, I kind of lost it. I want to, okay. So there was this muscle here and then the bicep and then it came down through here. And I really like that, just the way that she defined that. So I don't want to lose that. And I remember the clavicle was just up about here. I'm just going to ignore the face. It's not really what I'm doing right now. And I think the, the stomach was really kind of pushed out the whole way because she had a really great line through here. And I think I lost it again. I'm going to try and adjust so I don't lose that line. So came out here. Then there was, this would be the deltoid essentially. And so that brings the arm just a little bit more forward. I really want to get that, that great gesture that she had. And I think that means I'm going to need to bring that out just a little bit more into that arm or front leg, really.
shadowed here. Yeah, mine's looking like a pregnant My Little Pony or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, coming out odd. Uh, I'm really losing that tail, but it's really not the point. And I don't like what I've got here. I kind of, I can't remember how she had it. It's not looking good there. I would need to reference that. Um, and we'll look at, I want to take a look at how she did it again in a minute, but that's, I feel like especially where I really lost it. And I kind of don't like that shape either. Mitchell takes on art has a $10 super chat. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. He says, Hey Dave, hard question here. Apologies. I want to become a standard, a standalone comic writer, illustrator. What books, tutorials, routines would you recommend if you want to help fast track me to success? Uh, okay. So now for writing, I highly recommend um, story. It's the, the title of the book is called story. Uh, I, I don't know who wrote it. I think if you told me, I'd go, Oh yeah, that guy. But anyway, that's a, a great book for writing. Um, beyond that, I really think you just have to kind of write. And uh, there are some, uh, some good groups online, I think, where you can get some criticism. It was, you really couldn't see this hand here. For drawing, it really comes down to, you need to learn your figure proportions. Then from there, you learn your anatomy. And then from there, you want to do these kinds of sketches and really start to turn your anatomy into something that that uh, is is more solidified figure drawing and get good with gesture. Gesture is so foundational and important for comic drawing. If you want to be able to draw on your own, or if you want to be a fine artist and, and do painting, that kind of thing, this kind of gesture drawing is is so essential. It's it's a huge, uh, you know. And then from there, you need to learn perspective. Uh, there's some good perspective books out there. I really recommend Framed Perspective by Marcus Mateo Mestra. It's a great one. Uh, and then, you know, just start drawing some pages and, and fail, which you will. Uh, I certainly did. And, you know, you you just kind of get better as you go along. Black use, univer Blacklist Universe is, uh, now we know who the writers are in the chat. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm going to leave this one here. I think there was a little bit of shadow in here. There's a little shadow in here. But uh, truthfully, what I want to do actually right now, I'm going to go grab that book. I want to see what I lost with that arm. I can find this. Here we go. So yeah, that arm to me, it's really difficult for me to make sense of. I would need to go through and and find some horse reference and. Yeah, it looks uh, a bit twisted, right? It does, and I'm sure it's right, and it looks great, but I can't. It's not making sense to me, and when that happens, I need to, you know look further so and that can happen and you can see how much i lost here uh i mean what's so important to me is i don't look here let me just draw i'll draw basically human proportion arm on there here's my tricep my bicep my elbow comes out here you know and it starts to look a little odd i mean you can kind of do that and sort it but really no you know that's not what i would want to do so I, I would get some proper reference all right so we're going to move on to are we on the last one Oh no, we've got this one. I think we'll skip the last one. We'll move on to this one here because it's already 919 and I want to go into some hands. How's that sound? Sure. Okay. All right, so this is the one we're, we're doing here. And let me turn this thing over so I'm not cheating. And I remember she was a little more turned in her upper body toward us. Pizza Monster Art says Scott Robinson's book on perspective is really good. It's very technical, but teaches you everything you'll need to know. Yeah, uh, for sure. It's it's great. I find something that's really important to me. Um, I totally have forgotten the pose. I think this arm kind of came. I've forgotten the pose entirely. I'm going to end up making up my own. Oh, wait. Let's check it out again because you got, you got distracted there by the chat. That's all right. This hand came out like this. This is much harder when you do it this way, isn't it? It was kind of like like, I think the arm was in like this, though. So anyway, I'm going to just do my best with it. And then, yeah, the legs were kind of turned this way. Okay. 
Um, it's really important to me with with thing, with perspective, especially. It can get very technical, and I don't have any patience for that at all. Just because it's not useful to draw a comic or anything, really. You're there's no way. Like you can you can take. Here's my perspective point, and I can, I'm going to draw out to it, and then draw some verticals down. And I want these to be exactly even. And so I'm going to draw a line here like this and a line here like this and that gives me my center point and so how does this work yet oh right and so then i draw another perspective line out through here and so if i draw from here to here and then down to the next one that'll make that one perfectly in perspective and you can do you know i don't know that you need to ever do those middle ones again now i just need to go like this in reference again that'll give me my next one uh you can do that if you want I'm not doing that. I don't have time. Nobody has time for that. So while I think that stuff is really useful, I think you really need to learn simple ways to be able to make it work. Uh, my opinion. I drew a ball here. Can't remember. You know what? This, this figure is going to be a, a bit of a waste of time probably because I, I, truly don't remember what I was drawing, but I'm going to go for it. See what we get. We'll see how different it ends up being. I feel like she's a little short in that leg. And it just, it's a bit of a, I didn't really like the gesture. I know she had her hip here. It uh, and then her leg came out here from it. And if nothing else, at this point, I am actually uh, doing a more complete uh, gesture drawing to get my placement rather than trying to do a finished drawing on nothing and ending up with the problems that I had. Okay, I'm just gonna go for it from here. <clears throat> bar, B-A-W-R Bar says, uh, he likes Alita Battle Angel, he should do it on a stream. Yeah, actually, uh, you know what? That'll be one, when we come back, for Monday Night Draw, and we have Meredith here again. I'll do that for sure. I think I'll be a blast. All right, so her head is, is basically here. I'm not going to draw detail for her face again. Get her hand in here. I'm basically going to have to just make up her arm. I can't remember, unfortunately. Coming to her leg, over the foot, her ankle bones, probably a little large. It's all right. The gesture, toes, now her other leg. Draw the line that you're talking about, Eric, right here. Yeah. It really does work well. It's a yeah. great reference. I'm not sure that her hand was anything like this, but it's going to be like this now. I'm basically just drawing the same hand that I did on the last guy. It's all that's ending, ending up uh, happening there. It's all right. It is. So 
some ugly man feet she's got. So there you go. That's the best that I could do <laughs> without. Lo Let me take a look and see how far off it was. That's close. Okay. So, you know, I want to really, especially focus on what I lost. You can see she has a really nice curved line through her body. And so from the side, her weight would be kind of forward like this and then out for her hips and then, uh, you know, down to her feet, and it gives her a nice, uh, a really nice solid sort of a gesture. I really like that gesture. I lost that entirely in mine. And so it makes it much more static. And so that's where, and you can see, I even brought it out here. So I, I would have been much better off to kick my hips back. It's something I really lost with that one. But I did also get a lot out of it that I feel like I was able to kind of remember and capture. So it wasn't a total failure, but I definitely lost some things with that one. Mitchell takes on art says I did a ton of gestures like this yesterday. Not even close to this good. Well, thank you very much. But inspiring for sure. Also, if I want a more stylized look compared to a comic, is figure gestures still useful yeah absolutely figure gestures are very very useful you can take something like this and then it can really inform a much more stylized look and and ground it also something i'm a big fan of uh, if you look at joe Matarera, his work is is really stylized or or um ed mcginnis but the figure drawing is is really really solid and i'll tell you right now they could do this exceptionally well i have no doubt well, I, I know for sure they could do this really really well all right uh -uh. Tomacar says, Dave, going to send you my gesture on Instagram after. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Definitely do that for sure. So uh, we're going to move into hands. You ready? Uh, yeah. Don't move it yet. Look. Yeah, you know, we both... I like what you did with the legs, though, on that figure, but we both definitely struggled with that one more. Oh, and yeah. you definitely struggle with the horse a bit, too, but that's, you know what? Never did a horse, so this is how you do it. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go into the next one here. <clears throat> Amateur Artist says, Dave, this is probably my favorite type of stream. Always so helpful. Well, thank you very much, Amateur Artist. I appreciate it. I saw that you, you were asking if, you're, if you should do it um, digitally. So hopefully you're doing that right now. So I'm going to be looking at, this is, I think, book two. Oh, no, book four. This is book four. So this will be toward the end for your book, because you've got the whole thing all in one volume, right? Um, I guess so. Let's see. <clears throat> yeah, it doesn't say on the back. Okay. Well, Let me we have should a look. be able to find some of this stuff. Yeah, for sure. So... This book here, I have drawn literally every hand in here. Uh, I did it a couple years ago, and it was really, really useful for me. Uh, I don't know that, you know what, let me zoom in a bit again, just so you guys can, because it's all very small, unfortunately. But uh, her hands are, as much as I love her figures, her hands are really my favorite. They're okay, I found that page. Okay, great. So I'm going to just going to start with the first page that I basically jumped onto. I mean, well, the first page had no figures on it. So let's see where we started here. So we're going to go on to the second page and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, start drawing a hand. And I'm going to start with this one here. The one that's midway down the panel. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the only way, like I'll, I'll skip around a bit. I'm not going to draw every hand, but uh so here's the, her wrist, which is cut off, but it would come on just about here. That's what it looks like to me, or that's where I'm imagining it's going to go. And then I've got the back of the hand here. And you can see where with this little hook here, that little hook line, that's because your webbing goes much further out in your hand than your knuckles. And she really chose that very effectively, just like that. But she's got her thumb just kind of attached here. And then for her fingers, 
something that she does really, if you notice, this is just a single curved line here. And then on the other side, she's got her knuckles defined. And you can see how quickly that really looks like a, a nice solid figure or a finger. And so that's something that I've gotten from other artists too, but I really got that kind of solidified for me from Claire Wendling. And so I've got that line coming up in here, webbing, and then I got a finger here. I'm gonna try and do this pretty quickly. These are gestures, and you really want to try and get as much as you can, much information into your head as you can, as fast as you can. And you'll capture more kind of as you go along. You'll find that, uh, and I'm not gonna do tight versions of these. I really want to get as many of these in as as I can before we uh, have to wrap this one. But. Um, yeah, the more that you do, the more you'll be able to really uh, just capture effectively uh, with a simple line drawing. And uh, I never quite capture exactly what she's got, but the point for me isn't really to copy her anyway. It's it's to get you know a great hand like that very very simply and get a feel for it. That padding between the the thumb and first finger, she likes to define that uh, yeah, a lot as well. Defined like that. Yeah, it's such a good landmark. Yeah. All right, I'm going to move on to the next one. Let's go on to the next page here. Let's see. I'm going to try and stick to pages real, on this side of the book. There's a real, there's a real neat one there with the um, one, two, three, four, fifth panel with a tree trunk and the rat kind of dude. The next one down. Oh, yeah. Let's do uh, that one, too. I want to do this one first. I really like this hand. And actually, okay. let's do both of those hands, and then we'll do that one. So I'm going to start with the top one. So she's got her fingers kind of, there's a bit of a block of fingers here. The uh, back of the hand, the body of the hand, and then she's got this knuckle coming up like this. And then the thumb is just about there. And I really like how she's, she's got a bit of a, it's what it is, is this wrinkle, uh, in your finger, so you got your finger, and then there's a bit of a wrinkle out, and she's really defined that nicely in all of her fingers. So it's a curved line like this, and then she's got that little wrinkle defined in there. That's going to be it. I mean, it's so fast to do these. Let's go on to the next hand here. How's it coming, Eric? Yeah, good. Should I be going faster to try and screw you up? No, we're good. <laughs> okay. I want to make this as stressful as I can. Oh, that horse did it. <laughs> horse did it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> You had to know I was definitely going to pull it up to show. I knew it. there was going to be a curveball somewhere. I was just waiting for it. Yeah. Okay, so I've got her finger coming out here. And then she's got, that would be this muscle area in here, like this. And I've kind of lost my shape in here. This is a bit of an unusual hand for me. I don't know that I've, I, well, I know I've drawn it. But obviously, I didn't retain it as well as I could have. So this is good for me to be doing this again. Yeah, even then, in this angle, she has that padding there as well. Yep. Yeah. And it's defined so simply. If you're copying your own hands, you're going to get lost in a million little lines in detail. I really I recommend it. I mean, definitely do it. But the benefit of, of doing, and I think, there. Uh, and the way that she's got this right here, she's got that little hook in and what that is, and I'm not as thin as I could be right now, but you've got tendons right here. And so she's defined that tendon shape. And this is, these kinds of things are so uh, 
great to pick up from an artist. And it's the kind of thing that, yes, you can get it from your own anatomy uh, and, and figure drawing, like life drawing. But this kind of simplification is just so incredibly useful. And I didn't really capture that hand as well as I'd like. I, that's one that, I, and I that can tell you when one. I, what's that? But that, that's a tough one. That it is a tough one, and I, I, yeah, I really lost a thumb. I'm gonna try and redo it. I tended when I was doing these a couple years ago. Anytime I hit a hand like that, where I I just couldn't capture it effectively, like quickly, uh, I would just do like five of them. I just try again and again until it started coming more naturally. So my thumb is here. Yeah, it's a very unusual position for the hand and it looks great, but <clears throat> all right. So we're gonna move on. It's out of the camera a bit. <clears throat> Mitchell yeah, that's takes on art says, he says better than I thought I'd do. I, so I think it's working out for him. He's doing pretty well with it, which is great. Sorry, Eric, I cut you off there. No, I just said that's a neat hand then. It is. And so, yeah, we're going to do this one here. Uh, it's very small in the picture, so apologies. But so he's got the palm here, or he, this would be, I should say, he the figure, she the artist. So there's the palm. This finger is coming. And I'm actually doing a bit more of a gesture sketch with this one because I find this angle more difficult for myself. So, and also I, <laughs> I struggled the last time, so I'm a little gun shy. And then fingers are coming in like this. And then he's, she's got the, let's see, make sure I'm capturing these decently well. And then the last finger, just like this. And the thumb connects in here. And the thing about drawing hands more than anything else is uh, they, the range of positions and poses and the, the amount of shape change that that can create on a hand, you really need to do these kinds of studies. It's the only uh, way to get better at it. Okay. So I'm gonna draw this all as a, as a bit of a nice curve. And then for the top of it, I'm gonna go and draw in those knuckles. Gives it a nice shape there. I gotta be honest, Eric, I'm finding this to be more difficult than I thought it would be. For, like I thought, oh, hey, I've done this before. I've done tons of these. This would be easy. Yeah, but, it, that's why I think because the hands are so gestural, it's, it's almost hard to break down into shapes. It is, and... Yeah. Uh, you know, this is where just, you know, a lot of study and I haven't done this for a little while. So I, I've kind of and you fall back in your own ways, which is why it's so great to just. Uh, to review this way, you know. I think I would be a better artist for really going in here and doing this again um, all the way through the whole book again. And it's relaxing for me to do even when it's a struggle. I just really enjoy this. All right. So there's that one. So I'm going to move on. I'm trying to stick. I think I said that a minute ago. I'm trying to stick the hands on this page. Just so it's a little easier. <clears throat> and so we have a hand that's actually very similar in this one, just from a different pose. It's it's really this hand here, but it's slightly different. Yeah, it's, with the finger extended. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So, uh, and because we did that a minute ago, this should be just a little bit easier, which is kind of nice. And this is where, you know, it's really, it becomes kind of com compounding knowledge. So here's the back of my hand. I'm drawing that as a bit of a, a volumetric shape like this. The wrist comes out like this. I've got my knuckles or my, or my fingers coming in here. And then this finger. And again, a nice kind of curve shape here. And knuckle, knuckle. So it gives it a nice finger shape. Is that making sense, Eric? I don't know. Yeah. I'm trailing off. All right. Yeah, this, one, this one's a lot easier to look in, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and 
and tighten this in. Mark F. Uh, Mark F. Huzinga, apologies, Mark, says, oh, it never gets truly easy, Mitchell, but you do get more comfortable. Uh, we all do have our favorite areas <clears throat> that we usually show in our art. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the more uh, areas that you can get comfortable with, uh, it just, you know, it, it makes your art much, much stronger. But, yeah, um, you'll find when you're starting to learn how to draw things, some things will be more difficult. And uh, chances are those things will always be <laughs> a little bit more difficult just have natural strengths and it's just it's really just having the the willingness to do the work that you have to do to get better at the things you're not as good at what would you say you struggle with the most with drawing who me yeah you who else am i asking <laughs> uh well the list is quite long um my hands is definitely a problem um, I would say that's the the biggest area. So there's my attempt at drawing that hand. It's not exactly the same. It's all right, though. I feel like I captured it well enough to be kind of happy enough with it, you know? You're going so small. They look good, though. Sorry, they're so small. Yeah, they're coming up great. There's something I picked up that she's doing, which is going to help help me a lot. I've always struggled with this over here. Oh, we can close the book. No. <laughs> um, this angle over here. Yep. The way she defines that really helps because I normally when I draw it from the side, it's you know it's kind of soft, you know, and it yeah. just doesn't work well. Well, adding that angle is definitely going to, I think, improve the hands a lot, my hands a lot more. Absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right, let me find the page again. Oh, okay. Well, right. While you do that, I'm going to keep moving here. <clears throat> oh, there's such a great hand here. It's so small, though, that I, I don't want to inflict that on you guys. Let me just keep going. Right, let's do it. Let's do it. It's so small, you wouldn't be able to see. And I see a couple of really good ones here uh, that are on the inside of, you know what? Uh, where is that? Okay, draft. I found the page. Which hand is it? Oh, the his right hand or left hand? Um, well, we've already done a couple like this, and on my own, I would do the both of them just because you know the more you oh, do. Okay. But I was thinking this one here. Oh yeah, yeah, the fist. Yeah. Yep. So I'm gonna be way over here, unfortunately. Hopefully, you guys can see the reference I'm looking at. So uh, I've got the the back of my hand. Kind of a, as a simple shape, it would be basically like that. Then my knuckles are going to come in like this. Ball for my thumb. <clears throat> and that's going to be enough for me to start. I'm a little long, but it's all right. Really nice, simple, elegant way to, to to show the the folds that you get inside your fingers when they bend. You know what my favorite part of the stream is? Mm -hmm. All of these ones, but especially this one. I'm going to come out of this, uh, I think, a little bit better than I was before, you know? Yeah, I think doing these, you always pick up something new that you didn't before. And yep. There's only so much you can retain, I guess, on the first go around as well. And There is. And you know what? There's only... Um, I, I don't learn when I'm when I'm drawing sketches. Like I love Monday Night Draw. I really enjoy it, but I'm not learning. So this is really very gratifying. All right, so I've got that one. I think actually before I move on, 
Can you see it? You can't see it there. I want to draw this one here. Uh, okay. It's similar to some that we've done before, but with the fingers extended. Uh... See, like that, I think she probably knocked out in like five seconds. She did. Oh, you know, she did. I don't know if I'm going to be able to really effectively draw this. I'm going to do my best here, but to draw it and keep it in the camera is a little tough. So, so I've got the ba the base of my hand. It's going to be my shape, I think, close enough for now. Angled a little higher, and then the fingers come out. Uh, yeah, this is hard. Harder than you expected. Yeah. Just because the fingers, I, I, I don't know how to construct it. Because she was like, I'm pretty sure she was purely gestural there. And just, yeah. you know, just whipped, whipped it out and came out amazing. And they, you know, she called it good. It's very gesture. It's very structurable, though. Like, watch, I'm going to draw the pinky. So I'm going to draw the top of it first, uh, curve it to a bump, and then straighten it out. And then the bottom, I'm just going to draw just a just curve. Just round it, round it a bit. Yep. Yeah. And I pointed a little bit too much there. And then she's got um, this kind of a padding just to find like that. Really easy. <laughs> and then the next finger curves up a little bit more. So I just make my peak a little bit higher. I'm starting over on this one. Just like that. Next one. And then one more. Oh, yeah. You nailed that one. Thank you. Yeah, it's actually, and then the thumb is coming towards you. So what she's drawing is she's got um, this shape and then your knuckle rides higher. And so she's got that shape attached. And what you see here, and you can be sure again, she did that as a quick gesture, but she's got that bumps down into the thumb, just like that. Yeah, what makes it difficult is the third finger is um, raised. Yeah. But if you bear in mind how you know how to draw those fingers really quickly, and if it's more comfortable, you could draw it all basically uh, both fingers as a shape like this, and then adjust from there. Hey, David, you can just pronounce my last name as Wiesinga if that helps. I'm so saying it wrong, though, aren't I? It's Dutch, after all. <laughs> What's a guy got to do to potentially join your stream in the future? I really enjoy these things. Uh, you know what? We will have a review stream coming up very, very soon. Uh, really, like a, a week. I have not actually been working on it, but I will this week. So it's coming right up. And uh, you'll be able to bring your artwork on and we can we can talk about it. So that is coming. Uh, I'll make an announcement about that just as soon as we kind of get that one sorted out. But it's coming very, very soon. I'm way behind on doing that. I haven't done one for a few months. All right. So I'm looking at a hand that might beat us both. So this one already did. Did it? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm thinking this one, Eric. What do you think? Uh, which one's that? One uh, right here. The one that's facing us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I have a feeling. Can you see it better if I close in? The problem is, I, if I get closer, it gets blurry. Uh, but it's. You know what's funny is a lot of these hands. I'm like, ah, that's easy, and then you go in there, and it's like, what on earth? I know. So uh, my basic shape for this one is just going to be like this for the back of the hand, or for the you know the palm, and then. My fingers are going to extend up from that, and I'm going to do the same basic thing. Uh, there's the pinky, and she's got the pinky there, and then this portion here defined just with a line. Uh, this is already actually starting to feel, I'm going to say, a little easier for me. I'm getting kind of the feel for her stuff again. It's just been a couple years. Did you use this book for, uh, well, when you were working on Wonder Woman? Because I'm seeing some Wonder Woman hands here. Yep. Okay. That's actually, yeah, that was when I first really started looking at it. Did I say two years ago? Wow. Uh, not sure. I think you said I've, I've been saying two years ago this whole time. Yeah, that was Wonder Woman. That was 2014 and 2015. So longer than I'm thinking. Time flies. There you go. 
Ultimate says, I can't draw hands to save my life. This is how you do it. This is how you learn. You need to just give it a try. I will also, uh, again, if you go onto David's channel, he did a how to draw hands video on his YouTube channel as well, which is exceptionally helpful. You may, you may want to check it out. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. And yeah, there's a definitely a whole video and it really goes into more of the anatomy and, and, you know, some different concepts. This is really just kind of gesture drawing and it, it is so much of it uh, that, you know, we're not covering anatomy as much as, as I guess we could, but uh, with Claire Wendling, I, I love her gestures so much. I really wanted to, to cover that. I'm finding a few pages without a lot of hands. So we're skipping ahead. All right. So I'm thinking, Eric, it's, it's 951. Mm -hmm. We have time for, uh, let's do one more hand. How does that sound? Uh, sure. Okay. I want to try and find one that's on this page. I just saw one that I really liked, but okay, here we go. Uh, where's how many pages is that? Let's see. So I've got two hands actually, but they're both really good, and we can do both of them. I think we can fit it in. How far did you go? Oh wait, it's like I'm a off camera. Thank you, Edward. We'll take a moment there. Okay. Am I on? I'm. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm Edward. I'm looking at these ones here. So. Sheldon Martin has a ten dollars super chat. Thank you very much, Sheldon. Uh, I missed. Uh, if you said it, is this your favorite Wendland comic? Also, thanks, Dave and Eric. Love learning with you guys. Uh, and thank you very much. It is my favorite. It's also really kind of the only one that I know of. She has not done a lot of comic work. So much of her work is is sketch work, which I love. But yeah, for me, this is the Claire Wendland comic. Yeah, um, I would. I would say this. This is the book for hands because her other books, you know, although they're in absolutely incredible masterpieces, it doesn't go into hands like it does in this book, from from what I can tell. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if you. Oh, sorry. I, I don't know if you noticed the same, Dave, but um, you know, as great as our other books are, this I mean, this book is just full of hands. Yes. Yeah, and they're all so incredibly well done. Story by Osmosis says there's no easy way around training your gray matter in hand to draw uh, gestures, but it's doable with practice. Absolutely. It is. And it gets more fun the more you do it. So I'm drawing this hand first. I'm just drawing basically this is going to be my palm just to give me a general shape there. The hand, the fingers kind of come off and round like this just as a quick shape. And then this finger comes up here just like that. I've got a, a bit of a ball here for my uh, thumb. I love how she's got, now that would be this bone. You can see it right, right here that I, you really can't see. This is why these kinds of drawings are so good because things are exaggerated. She is very thin, by the way, Claire Wendling. And I, I have yeah. to imagine she uses herself as reference. She's, uh, you know, I'm sure got great hands for drawing. All right. And then my thumb is just going to, come past my fingers just through here. So I'm just going to tighten that up. She's super humble in the in interviews that she's done as well. Very humble. I'm not surprised. She's like a lifelong student. You know, you can see it in her art. And uh, that takes humility to, to you know, constantly um, pursue getting better. And not just think, hey, you know what? I know everything now. I yeah, one of her, her books um, I was telling Dave about, she uh, she went over old sketches of hers. And uh, since she felt like she had learned a lot since the last time she drew them, she drew them again. So on one side of the page, she has the old drawing. On the other side, the new drawing. It's uh, just amazing to see that she's still willing to learn. And, you know, yep. awesome. Yeah, well, to me, I, I really think, yeah, there are artists that are just naturally going to be more talented than other artists. Um, and that just makes it easier, you know, but it doesn't necessarily make you better. What really makes an artist better um, is the willingness to keep growing and not stagnate. So there's that hand. I did not capture it as well as she did. That's another tough one. It is a tough one. And yeah, I kind of lost it a little bit. But you know what? Uh, this is one I think on my own I would draw a couple of times just to see if I could capture a little bit more 
what I lost there. There's definitely something, and I'm not sure what, but uh, we're going to move on, and I'm going to do this hand here. Which one? The one next to it? Yeah, the it, the other hand of the same figure. And so I've got my arm kind of coming up here. Uh, I definitely find it helpful to draw the wrist as well. Yeah, it, it really can be. This is the back of the hand here. Now, it's flat because I'm not drawing the thumb yet. I'm going to draw the thumb as a bit of a separate shape here. And it comes out just like this. And then I really like... You can see, and if I bend my wrist, it's obviously very rounded. A little bit, it comes up, flats just a little bit, and it rounds out. And she captures that very, very nicely here. And I'm going to go ahead and start to just draw this hand. Well, that one works a whole lot easier than the other ones. Yeah? Yeah. You know, a, a big part of that might be just uh, as you're going along, it's getting easier. Yeah, for sure. I hope you're kicking yourself for, right now for not doing this. Yeah, I need to definitely do it more. You know, the amount of artists that I am kicking myself for right now for not because I've got actually a pretty good list of artists where I'm like, I really like to try this. And I just I don't. I'm busy and yeah, definitely kicking myself for it. And oh, man, the hand like, holding the book is so cool, too. In my own hand, I feel like this comes back just a little bit further. So I'm just going to oh, and I'm off. I'm is this what you meant? I'm off the screen with my drawing. I'm going to bring this. No, I was just saying that the hand that's holding that book is really cool as well. <clears throat> back this a little bit more. And it doesn't look good. Never doubt Claire Wendling. And the hand that hold, yeah, the hand holding the book. You can't see yeah. it on mine here, but it's this one here. Yeah, that's so a cool. very, very cool hand. But being that it is 10 o'clock, and we yep. have to wrap up one day or one time, whatever. We have to wrap up. Uh, we're going to stop it there. For hands, I have not. I, we, we did a bunch of them. I didn't get a chance to um, do these on my own. But that's something I, I definitely recommend. The same way that I did with figures. You really want to go ahead and look at the hand and then try and recreate it yourself. Uh, it, it's an important part of the, the process. But I, I think you really get kind of a, a sense of... Uh, certainly how I go about this and hopefully the value of Claire Wendling's uh, artwork um, and, you know, why I get so much out of it. So uh, let's get us bowl. I try and get in the camera. I always go the wrong way. Um, so, yeah, <clears throat> she's absolutely one of my favorite artists uh, just to look at, but then also just such a valuable resource uh, for drawing. So, um, I hope that this was valuable for all of you guys. Thank you, everyone, so much for coming in and watching and hopefully drawing along. And if you haven't drawn along now, hopefully you'll take the the chance to do it, you know, a, a little later on. It's I, I think you'll be amazed at just how much you can get out of uh, a session like this. So uh, and we can see Eric's. I can see some of your hands that we missed toward the end there. I don't know if you know. What I could, yeah, there we go. Yeah. And they came out great. I'd yeah, call yeah. that an unmitigated success. And you did those very, very quickly, too. Look at that. Yeah, I need to go through this book again, Yeah, for sure. Draw every hand in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's like I'll you said, this, this is the way to, to, to improve. I it mean, really I, is. You know what? I think I'm going to do it, too. I, and I never have time, but this is time well spent. And the amount of times I sit and play video games. You know what I did today, Eric, before this? <laughs> I sat. So I'm playing Conan Exiles. I sat and... Um, I collected rocks and made bricks <laughs> and <laughs> I, I made food for my, cause you have thralls in the game, you know, anyway, I mean, yeah, really the amount of, I spent probably three hours doing that today. Uh, I really could just sit and do this and I need to start doing that more. I'm wasting way too much time when I could be, you know, improving. So hopefully you guys will do that too.
Neil Durkin says, uh, great lesson, guys. Thanks for letting us draw along. Yeah, thank you very much, Neil. I really appreciate it. Uh, Dan Genovesi says it was valuable. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dan. And thank you, One Mighty R, uh, amateur artist. Uh, Russ Hicks, thank you very much again for moderating and, and helping us out with the links. Uh, Tomic Art. And uh, yeah, we will see you guys uh, next week. I, I'm off the screen again. I, I don't think we've really... I have... And I've mentioned this a couple of times. So we have Johnny Desjardins coming up, if not this coming week, certainly within the next two weeks, I need to email him and say, hey, you know, when can we get you to come on? He's going to be doing some palette knife painting. He's actually going to come here. He'll be beside me uh, in my studio. <laughs> not much of a studio right now. But uh, he, so I'll be painting with him. That's going to be a lot of fun. Eric, you're going to be uh, with us too. Yeah, I'll be helping out with, uh, with, you know, monitoring the chat and... Uh... I talked to Eric about it. He he won't paint. He's, he doesn't want to do the palette knife painting. So maybe we can convince him. We'll see. It'd be <laughs> great if you did. But uh, either way, yeah, we'll be doing that. Certainly, if not this week, it'll be the next week. I just need to talk to Johnny. We will also have a review stream coming up. That will be on Robert Marzullo's channel. I need to contact Robert and say, hey, well, you know, when can we do this? And I've been so busy. I have not done that. So uh, I will do that tonight before I go to bed. And... Uh, Make sure that we can get that arranged. So, so it looks like uh, Brian Stelfreeze is in the chat. Really? Well, someone, uh, with a, someone with a name, Brian Stelfreeze. Well, <laughs> yeah. it'd be great if it is. Yeah, it certainly would be. Uh, there would be a massive honor. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to right now assume that it's true. And thank you so much for coming. I don't know what to say. I, I mean, I'm a massive fan. I know you are too, Eric. I think we all are. Absolutely. Uh, and we would, uh, you know, give our non-drawing hand to have brian selfries on here to paint with that would be incredible oh, man. yeah so, um so yeah that's that's gonna be it for me eric you want to say something before we go no just thanks again this is always always so much fun to do and uh yeah it's like like you said definitely need to do it more i know personally i do so yeah. i think what I'm, what I'm gonna do this week is work my way through this book again yeah, no. well, so will I. No video games for me this week. I'm going to go through this book again. So right. Brian says we'll have to paint sometime, Brian Stelfreeze. Brian Stelfreeze said that? Yeah. Man, you are so on. I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, we'll have to figure it out. We will figure it out. That would be incredible. That would be amazing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. Well, on that note, um, before I explode, I'm going <laughs> to sign off. <laughs> so we'll see you guys next week. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone.